in religious teachings there's a verse where it talks about the God and God says behold I make all things new and the former things shall pass away in order for something new to come into existence something from the old has to pass away now even though many religious people they claim they believe in their religious teaching but they cannot accept the reality that their belief system is part of the former things that must pass away if God is bringing in a new heaven and a new earth and the former things are made to pass away. It is because whatever it was in the old, you don't need it anymore. If you are going, woo, if God is bringing to the earth, or if we die and we go to heaven, or to the hereafter what do you need a Bible for what do you need a Quran for in the hereafter you don't need that you are or have elevated you have evolved from a lower plane to a higher plane. Behold, I make all things new. It's just like there are those in my age group, probably in the 50s, you might not see 50 year olds 60, 70, you may not see a lot of them playing around on social media. Many of them barely have a cell phone because they cannot let go of the old to embrace the new. But that is what religion and God is all about. To take you from this place and why you want to stay here anyway. God is offering you something new, but you're holding on to the old. It's like many of us, when we were in grade school, we had a fear of going to high school. A totally different environment a different a different ball game behold I make all things new in biology I am told the reason for death is to improve the species and you can see this in a simple experiment maybe in roaches you can take a certain insecticide and this generation the insecticide will kill the roach but when they die and produce something new 
the DNA in the new babies, the new generation, build up a resistance to that particular poison. So a lot of times, the poison that was meant to kill them, they can actually live on it. They can actually drink it. They can actually use it to live. Those animals, those plants, those germs that cannot adapt to the new, they go extinct. We don't see them anymore. The life that you see on the planet today has changed, except maybe in reptiles and some of the lower forms of life. They haven't changed in millions of years. But you can see the change in the adaptation of birds and, 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 and mammals on this planet. As they die and the new is brought forth. So we have teachings from the 1920s and the 1930s. We have people like Marcus Garvey, Noah Juali, Father Divine. It's so many of them. Master Farah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, Nation of Islam teachings. What we must understand in the 1920s, 1930s, you're dealing with the people living under oppression who were illiterate. There was no critical thinking. There was no using common sense. Our minds was filled with Christianity or some other spooky religious ideology, voodoo or whatever. So when Nation of Islam teachings, Moore Science Temple, or these other beliefs from the 1920s, 1930s, we embrace them because we were illiterate and we took them on face value. We embrace them because they gave us self-esteem. They made us gods and kings and queens. When in this nation, we are trash. We are inferiors. We're nobodies. But under these teachings, these beliefs, we're kings. We're gods. We're queens. And we took the teachings on face value. We embraced the teachings based upon emotion, not an intellectual examination. We must also remember that in the, that in the 1920s and the 1930s, actual physical slaves ex-slaves were still alive. We, our ancestors, had just came off the slave plantation. So, under oppression and out of emotion, because these things told us we're gods and we are God's chosen people and all this fantastical stuff our ancestors embraced it it gave us self esteem it also gave us identity I'm a Muslim I'm a Pan-African I'm I'm a Israelite I'm a Moor it gave us identity so it served its purpose then
just like milk, just like Similac serve a purpose for a child. But as you grow, you lose the taste for milk and your teeth start coming in. And you want something to chew on. That was our milk. That was our Similac. And since the 1920s, 1930s, we should have gotten that and evolved and grown and become new. As you grow, you steady become something new at one time we could not walk but as we grow we stand we can run but now those things have served their purpose served their time and we should have evolved in our thinking process that was good for a slave off the plantation but you are or you call yourself a free man and woman now and those things must be made to pass away but we hold on to them in fact we even make up new versions of those things that should be thrown away. You don't need that anymore. In order to grow, the former things must pass away. So when the farmer begins to get his field ready for the next crop, he has to plow under. Woo! He has to plow under the former crop, dig it up, and put it under so he can plant something all brand new. And that's what this ministry represents. We understand, we honor the past, we respect the past, but we are not the past. We represent the brand new. And the former things shall pass away. And time, this is our time. If your mother bake a cake in 1950, and you wasn't born until 1960, how can you claim the cake? That's my mama. And you said, we made a cake. No, your mother made a cake in her, in her time. So it makes no difference what Kemet did or what Africa did or whatever. That's what they did in their time. This is your time. And because you are alive, you can actually become greater than them. Their time is over. This is your time. We need to stop trying to be like Marcus Garvey. Stop trying to be like Malcolm X. Stop trying to be like Elijah Muhammad. Stop trying to be like Noble Drawley. Learn how to be yourself. Because the same energy, the same source that was given, that gave them theirs, would give you yours. Think about it. Jot down your comments.